if you don't do the work to assess where your company's specific challenges are and then apply measurable and tangible outcomes for your programs and initiatives, you're very likely going to end up with demographics that remain largely unchanged. And that's incredibly frustrating, right? Because there is a lot of work that goes into this. Um, but again, if, if you're sort of taking the one and done approach, um, expecting real change uh, and lasting change um, is uh, it, you're setting yourself up for, for real heartache. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the All Inclusive podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Greg Vargas, Vice President of Talent and Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Intersectionality at Diligent. In this episode, Greg offers valuable advice on how leaders can address the challenge of aligning diverse organisational cultures on diversity, equity and inclusion. How companies can respond to concerns about a lack of progress in diversity metrics and he reveals an exciting project that Diligence recently launched. As always, before jumping into the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, and follow on your favorite podcast platform so that you never miss an episode. That being said, let's jump in. Hi, Greg. Hi, Natasha. Oh, so glad to have you on the show. I'm really excited about this conversation. Um, so why not kick things off, tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and your journey to where you are today. Absolutely. And it's great to be here. So thanks for the invitation. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, I often uh, joke that I take a number of boxes when it comes to DEI. Uh, I'm an Afro-Latino gay man. Uh, I've been with my husband for close to 27 years. Uh, together, we have a 17-year-old daughter. Um, all are indicators that would put me in the more seasoned age bracket. Um, <laughs> uh, I also learn differently. Like uh, many in my family, I'm uh, someone with ADHD. Um, I've uh, always been involved in some kind of people work and often sought out opportunities work with uh, different kinds of people. Um, I was a resident assistant, and I, I think this is like a student warden or a senior mentor in the UK at uh, the uh, George Washington University in Washington, D.C. here in the United States. Um, this is the kind of role that teaches you very quickly how to work with very different people in uh, a rather combined workspace that just happens to be where you live. So things get interesting very quickly. And for me, that was a lot of fun. I also chaired our, uh, our university program board's multicultural affairs committee, uh, which is what a lot of this diversity work was called at that time. This is back in the early 90s. Um, uh, the Multicultural Affairs Committee uh, curated programs designed to get people to talk about challenging topics around race, sexuality, difference. Um, uh, after after uh, uh, college, I went to work at the uh, International Monetary Fund in, in Washington, D.C., uh, where I spent several years managing their Young Professionals Program, which was called the Econa Program. Uh, and then after more than a decade of, of that work, which was really quite quite fun and, and really interesting and challenging. Um, I decided to shake things up with my family and we relocated to the San Francisco Bay Area uh, where I shifted gears and, and moved in into the tech industry. Um, I, I consulted for a time in, in HR and then I joined Google Staffing Organization uh, where I had the chance to manage a pretty wide range of clients, including people operations, which is Google's vaunted HR team. Um, I also recruited for the Treasury and Public Relations uh, organizations. Um, uh, after Google, I left uh, for uh, a terrific opportunity to move to Yahoo and uh, join their recruiting leadership team during a time of quite a bit of change at, uh, at Yahoo. Um, I was responsible for growing uh, their talent pool and um, I later oversaw the development of the talent management and internal mobility strategy at Yahoo, which was new to the company. It wasn't particularly well formed. And so for me, that was um, a tremendous opportunity. Uh, what I loved about it is that it put a lot of emphasis on cultivating and championing underrepresented talent that people would move through the organization. Um, when COVID uh, struck, I did find myself at something of a crossroads and the opportunity to take some time to to really reset and uh, focus on both uh, my family and, and really myself. Um, I knew that anything that I was gonna do next, I, I wanted it to be with a mission-driven and, and purpose-driven company, which ultimately led me to uh, uh, Diligent. And 
uh, that's where I am uh, today as the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Intersectionality. Um, a couple of things that quickly about Diligent. Um, we're the leader in modern governance. Uh, we provide a SaaS solution or SaaS solutions, I should say, across governance, risk, compliance, and ESG that really enable uh, inex executives uh, worldwide to lead with purpose, right? We serve over a million users. We have uh, over 700,000 board directors who use our, our platform um, and uh, over 25,000 customers around the world. And uh, the reason why Diligent for me resonated as I was looking at new opportunities is I was really fascinated by the North Star at, at our company. Uh, the Diligent North Star is really about helping the most uh, influential people in the world make better decisions about our world, the environment, social and economic well-being. Um, we find ourselves at a critical juncture for purpose-driven organizations, for, for ESG, for uh, DEI, for stakeholder capitalism. Um, at Diligent, we can power all of that. Uh, the team at Diligent is phenomenal. Brilliant, supportive colleagues who really allow me to show up as I am. It's headed up by a transformative leadership team. Um, and I really enjoyed when I was going through the interview process, the honest conversations I was having with our CEO, Brian Stafford, and our chief people officer, who I report to. Uh, her name is Abby Dajon. And really the entire leadership team. I got to meet with everyone as I was going through this process. And I wanted to hear about the importance that they were placing on attracting and retaining sharp and diverse talent and the work that we as a company needed to do to move that needle. Mm. Um, the third thing, I guess, is really my mission. Um, rather than DEI and I being an afterthought or, yeah, you know, we should really look into that. That's super important. My, yeah. <laughs> my mission is really, it, it's, super, it's important to ensure that uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and intersectionality, which is that second I in my title, uh, that it underpins all of our talent programs uh, from the get-go, right? As opposed to an add-on. Uh, and I get to partner with a terrific program manager, a woman by the name of Anika Fisher, who really helps uh, to bring our pretty ambitious goals to, to life. What would you say from, from your experience so far is an effective way for leaders to address diversity, equity, inclusion in their own organizations? It's such a terrific question and it's a great point. Uh, really, my role came about as a result of uh, deep work that Diligent had started to do um, in the summer of 2020. I joined Diligent in January 2021 and my role came out of that, right? And so uh, uh, Diligent had established a task force around DEI and I to really explore how Diligent was showing up. And these were conversations that many companies were having in the wake of uh, the murder of George Floyd and that real summer of introspection uh, around um, uh, race and, and you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, globally, right? You were starting to see that. And so um, as a result of work that came out of the task force, they realized they needed to bring somebody in to help, and help strategize what it is that we were going to do uh, as a company. And so uh, we landed on a few things that I then got to help uh, bring to life, right? We recognized that education was going to be incredibly important, right, in terms of um, really training the team on on how to have conversations around DEI, right? Um, and so that was something that was going to be super important and also to have a shared language around DEI and I. Mm -hmm. And so we, we helped to do that. Um, accountability and transparency was going to be super important. Um, and so uh, it was important for us to uh, be honest about kind of where we were as a company, how we were showing up and what we were doing to um, progress change in, in, in different areas and different categories where maybe we were um, uh, really underrepresented. Um, we had to uh, establish things like ERG, employee resource groups. And so uh, that was something that we really um, uh, operationalized when I, when I joined. And that was an exciting um, uh, uh, outcome as well as some of the work that I was doing. But I mean, in terms of um, advice to leaders about effectively addressing DEI, um, I think it's important to really be consistent about the importance of DEI to the company's success. You know, you want to hold your managers accountable for hiring, growing, and retaining the talent that they think 
um, is representative of the company and should be representative of the company. Um, you want to ensure that there's that common language and understanding around DEI and why it matters. Um, an equation that I learned from a mentor of mine that I really champion wherever I go is a pretty simple one. Difference plus imagination equals innovation. If you're showing that you're bringing in different talent with different perspectives, that's going to inform what you do and how you do uh, your work and the products that you're delivering. And that's going to just lead to some remarkable uh, outcomes. So difference plus imagination uh, equals innovation is a great equation to commit to memory. Yes, um, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> that's really good. You also want to make sure that the um, DEI values are embedded in your people programs. And that's one of the things that I really loved about the opportunity that I took on at Diligent, right? Um, recruiting, talent development and training, performance management, all of it needs to be um, operated with the lens of DEI applied to it. And you want to hold your folks accountable for making sure that DEI initiatives are supported and enforced. Diverse hiring, for example, isn't going to really amount to much unless you're cultivating an organization that consistently celebrates and, and really champions different voices and implements change uh, based on different experiences and viewpoints. So hopefully a little sort of a longer uh, answer to the question, but hopefully that answered the no, question. No, 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 I think it definitely does. And and also I feel it, it's representative of the fact that um, it's not a, a simple thing in order to, to, to implement all of these things. Um, there's a number of, there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, but I really feel like the tips, the advice that you've given us some really good um, first starting points to really ensure that you start off on the right foot and you're actually going to be able to to kind of keep these initiatives and, and programs sustainable so that they'll, they'll kind of last throughout the whole organization's kind of growth, um, which actually leads me on to my next question in terms of growth. Um, Diligent has um, kind of gone through a period of of growth themselves which has resulted in a variety of different organizational cultures kind of being integrated in, into diligent and the way that you work so how do you how do you address that challenge of aligning um everyone and getting everyone on the same page and singing from the same hymn sheet when it comes to diversity equity inclusion yeah no we really it's, it's again a ter terrific question um uh, as a company we have grown substantially in fact the, the first year that i joined we had uh, four acquisitions right four very distinct companies doing terrific work um, that was aligned with uh, our overall strategy and so uh, as a company that's grown substantially as a result of these kinds of acquisitions we knew that we had to paint a clear picture um, with these companies um, that were coming under the diligent umbrella of what it is that we wanted to achieve together. And this meant incorporating some of the best from each company as we came together to, to really chart that new path as uh, what we call one diligent. Um, fundamental to this path um, has been this commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and intersectionality. And uh, with over 2,000 employees across 30 countries, uh, yeah. diligent really embraces it responsibility to enhance DEI and I throughout all levels of the organization. So being truly clear about that um, has been, I think, incredibly important as we've gone on this journey with these companies that have come into, into the organization. Um, it remains central to our overall company culture and, and we really strive to provide a place where everyone feels comfortable being their authentic selves. You hear that a lot, but for us, it's super important, again, to have that language and where people are hearing that all the time. Mm, and and uh, having that language, as you said, establishing um, the right languages to use is probably going to be quite helpful when you are acquiring any other businesses or, or when you are bringing on board any new people um, that they're aware of kind of this is this is the language that we use, this is what we're here for, and it's an integral part of our, our organization. Um, I like that you have intersectionality in your title. Um, could you share with us a little bit more behind that? Because it's not something that um, many, um, it's not included in many titles. We do talk about intersectionality when it comes to diversity, equity, inclusion, yes. However, why is it that, that um, Diligent or yourself has chosen to add that into your title? 
So for me, it actually really stood out when I was uh, when I was uh, researching opportunities. The fact that uh, this second eye was part of my title, I thought this is clearly a company that has given some thought about what it is they're looking for in this role. And again, it, it speaks to that language, right? And so intersectionality is really this idea of the fact that um, there are overlapping, in some respects, you can look at this Venn diagram, and say, right, there are overlapping um, potentially challenges, right, parts of who we are. And so, for example, in my case, you know, being uh, Afro-Latino and being gay, for example, those would be intersectional uh, elements that we're looking at that can inform um, both positively, but also in challenging ways, how we show up um, in, in an organization and, and 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 also in society as well. So it's again something that for us was uh, incredibly um, important and meaningful. And uh, and I love the fact that that's something that uh, is a part of my mandate and and kind of who I am mm. and what I'm doing here. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's it, it's great. It's a great title to have, and I'm, and I love the reasoning behind it as well. Um, so I also like to hear about new projects from the leaders that we speak to. So do you mind sharing with us um, a little bit about a current project that you're currently working on now that you're most excited about? Oh, there are so many things I'm excited about, but one of the things I'm incredibly passionate about um, is uh, a Diligent Academy. It's, it's this hub that we started in Baltimore in 2022. Um, we um, recognize, just taking a step back, we recognize that um, tech, um, talent, uh, there's a real underrepresentation of diverse um, people in, in tech and tech sales. Um, and we thought that there was something that we could do about that, certainly a diligent, right? And so we, uh, in 2022, we announced uh, the launch of uh, a new diligent hub in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, along with a new free training program to upskill and recruit underrepresented job seekers. Um, the, the training program was launched in partnership with a, a company called SV Academy, which is, uh, to my mind, the largest learning community of diverse sales professionals. Um, we ended up um, part bringing into the program approximately 100 Baltimore area residents. They were accepted into the program and then Diligent ended up hiring roughly 22 graduates to form uh, a, a first cohort who were matched with entry-level jobs in tech sales and uh, customer success roles here uh, at the company. We're going to take a minute to thank our friends at Dandy, the DEI analytics company, for supporting the show. To drive real change today, DEI leaders need to be strategic and they need to be data-driven. That's why today's most successful DEI leaders use Dandy to measure and manage their DEI programs in real time track key DI metrics and create reports at a push of a button. Are you ready to join the DI measurement movement? Click the link in the description below to download your free essential guide to data-driven DEI transformation. The reason for Diligent Academy and why we, we want to move forward with this project was really with the goal of creating high paying uh, entry level jobs in tech sales and customer success in Baltimore. Um, and to provide uh, career ready technical and professional skills for underrepresented job seekers and, and ultimately create a pipeline of talent, not just for us at Diligent, but also for Baltimore's uh, burgeoning tech community. Um, I, I found that basically Diligent has been a real reflection of our, cult, our, you know, our core company values around uh, driving client impact. Um, and, and being diligent, being true to, to who we are and what's important to us. Mm, lovely. I love that. And um, did you face any challenges that you weren't expecting when you um, started off with the academy? Um, I, I guess the biggest challenge was the, you know, the, the economy was um, certainly a factor, right? Because we, we have an office in, uh, in Washington, D.C., and we were opening an office in Baltimore as well. And uh, if you're looking at a map, they're not too far away. It's about an hour by train, hour, hour and a quarter uh, by car, depending on traffic. But the communities are very different. Uh, in Baltimore, it, it's uh, largely African-American um, uh, population. And so we knew that we were just going to have access to different talent. And it was going to give us this opportunity to really show up and say like, hey, listen, we're looking to diversify our, our community. and um, 
uh, at Diligent and we are looking for, we're going to the talent. I guess is maybe the best way to put it. And so um, it was important for us to put that stake in the ground. Um, and so uh, making that case uh, was uh, was important and it was important for us to say really, um, uh, the state very clearly that um, this is something that was important for us. And as a result, um, uh, we were going to um, we were going to do it. We were going to move ahead, and that uh, again is um, I have to say um, kudos to our our CEO for really um, um, staying um, true and, and committed to to this project uh, because he really helped us push this through. Oh, good, great, good to hear. How are you measuring the project success? So. Initiatives like uh, Diligent Academy and other um, DEI initiatives that we've got underway, um, that is, I will be very transparent, an area of growth for us, right? Um, there is truth to the cliche that what gets measured gets done. And so while we, we do the expected analytics, you know, we examine survey data around programs that we run, um, we we do things like we manage a structured and data driven recruiting process to to reduce recruiting bias. We conduct regular pulse checks to assess employee engagement. We we run an organizational um, health assessment in partnership with McKinsey. All of these data points, as is often the case with HR and DEI data, is siloed across different platforms, which right. makes it super challenging mm -hmm. <laughs> and time consuming. I can imagine. To pull together. Yeah, it's like, you know, so a lot of this information gets pulled into big Excel spreadsheets and then we run the analytics based on that. Um, but it, it's it's time consuming, right? To to really pull together clear insights to see where we are, where we're going, and then, you know, how how we're doing in terms of achieving our goals. So we knew that we had to get even tighter and and honestly more transparent around the impact of our programs. And uh, we recently partnered with a company called Dandy, uh, um, based here in the US, to help us bring these different data streams together to generate clear insight and intersectional measurements across race, uh, ethnicity, sexual orientation, disability status, age, and more that tie back to our programs to enable us to more quickly paint the picture of where we're making progress and also maybe where we're missing the mark. So um, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. We've, uh, we're about to launch the tool. There's been some uh, back-end work that we've been uh, doing in partnership with, with Dandy. And um, I look forward to coming back on then maybe another podcast and let you know what we've learned and what we're seeing as a result of, uh, of this partnership. Yeah, no, that sounds fantastic. And I think it's so important. Um, and I think it, it, it's, it's a topic that um, has been touched on, I think, at the moment, but it's not really uh, been talked about enough, I don't think, is, is the data side, because um, we all want to do great work. There's a lot of work that, that we want to do and, and have already started doing but if you can't like you said what gets um measured gets done so if you can't measure where you're at now to to where these programs are then it's always going to be difficult to, to get to where you want to be um so I'm, I'm i'm pleased to hear that that you are partnering with dandy and it's and you're on the road <laughs> to, to progressing forward with the way in which you you use your data to to really uh impact the way in which your your programs are run and, and how successful they are it's incredible incredibly important actually to be able to to tell that story with data um and uh too often um i, I you know for lack of a better term it's like a lot of these programs and initiatives can feel performative if you're not really taking a step back to analyze how you're doing, how effective you're being, and what, you know what's working and what's not, um, and and data is is a critical part of that story of telling that story. How do you address the concerns of a lack of progression? Because we know, like DEI, it's not. I say this as well on the podcast all the time. It's it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So there will always be times where actually you're nowhere. You're not as far forward as you, as you would like. Um, so how do you address that when someone is coming along saying, oh, but like, how comes we're not any further forward? Is this even working? A lot of times it's this, uh, this challenge of, you know, you will have these small wins, which are important wins. You know, you need to set the stage, lay the groundwork. Um, and that is good, except uh, you will be greeted with the, yeah, that's great, but what have you done for me lately? I think it's super important to be very focused on the fact that this work takes time. 
uh, one-off DEI training sessions or the inspirational speaker event can certainly count as a quick win, but it ends up being performative, honestly. For true, meaningful, and lasting impact, it's critical to recognize that DEI is a journey that's going to be different for each organization. If you don't do the work to assess where your company's specific challenges are, and then apply measurable and tangible outcomes for your programs and initiatives, you're very likely gonna end up with demographics that remain largely unchanged. And that's incredibly frustrating, right? Because there is a lot of work that goes into this. Um, but again, if, if you're sort of taking the one and done approach, um, expecting real change uh, and lasting change um, is uh, it, you're setting yourself up for, for real heartache, honestly. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, you are. You definitely are. <laughs> so <laughs> for all those leaders that are listening out there, definitely take on board um, Greg's advice. Like, as he said, you, you, you just need to really take stock on, on where you're at and, and just also be clear in the messaging that you're giving to any of the stakeholders that are in your organization about kind of the realistic um, picture of how you are going to be achieving these and when you're actually going to be achieving these goals um, just so that they're aware as well because I think it's important to manage people's expectations like you said. Um, thank you so much again for joining us Greg. I've really enjoyed our conversation today. You've definitely given us a lot to think about and a lot of tips and advice on, on how to really better move the dial. Um, before you do leave us, could you give some parting piece advice for um, the leaders out there that are aspiring to become the future DEI leaders? I feel like that's a great responsibility, <laughs> but I, here is what here is what I will say um, is super super important, and it goes back actually to this mentor that I mentioned earlier who gave me that uh, that great equation um, around diversity and uh, innovation. Um, it's the idea that you should go in to any role like this knowing that you're not going to have all of the answers and you need to observe what is happening and why a company is where it is and really give um, some thought to what are some small measurable outcomes that you're going to make that are going to really have profound changes over time and that is going to take time. So don't go in assuming that you're going to have all of the solutions because taking a cookie cutter approach to a challenging issue like DEI and I um, is, is, uh, is not something that's going to uh, really result in lasting change. So give yourself uh, the runway to take that time to look into what are some of the issues that are um, prevalent in that organization. Know that you're not going to have all of the solutions, but also know that you're not in this alone and that you're going to get to work with people together to help affect the change that you're hoping to see. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's some really great advice, Greg. Again, <laughs> right as we end, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, I'm so excited for for the work that Diligent is doing and, and is going to be doing in the future as well. We're definitely going to have you back on to learn about what's what's more what more work you've been doing and what you've been up to but for now thank you once again greg for joining me today and also how can people connect mm. with you because i think they definitely need to <laughs> oh my goodness thank you very much natasha and thanks for the time again i appreciate it um linkedin is great i i love connecting with people and so you will find me on linkedin greg vargas uh, if you do greg vargas dil uh, diligent uh, i should pop up pretty easily Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I will be linking um, your LinkedIn profile down below the episode. So everyone who is listening, if they want to connect with you, they can definitely do that. Um, and, and yeah, until we speak again, Greg. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.